Hey, you're probably wondering why I'm running around Yellow Springs, Ohio on this dreary, stormy day in June. Well, I am finishing up some work for the local radio station, WYSO. I am producing for their series called Why So Curious, where people write in with questions about local history and the local community. And while I'm here, I thought I would give you a little tour. Here we are in the entryway. Let's walk in. Here we are in the front hallway with some archival photos, an old radio, an old soundboard. And let's walk down the hall to where everyone's offices are. At the end of the hallway here is Juliet's office. Hey, Juliet. Hey! <laughs> so Juliet is the webmaster and the deputy operations director. That's her formal title, but really what she is is the person who taught me how to make radio. Aw, shucks. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, Juliet, what have you been working on today? Um, I have been editing, editing, editing. What are the most important things uh, that you look for when you're editing? When I'm editing a story, I'm looking, I'm looking at kind of the linkages between ideas, making sure that um, the story is going to be easily understandable to a listener who might be in their car with a toddler in the back who really, really wants their snack or, you know, at home with five things on the stove getting dinner ready. Um, in radio, we're always competing for people's attentions and that's fine, that's the nature of our medium, it's what makes radio so convenient, but it also means that we as writers and reporters have to be really, really careful about guiding our audience along with the stories that we tell. And I just am admiring, speaking of attention grabbing, <laughs> all of these all beautiful <laughs> decorations on your shelves, uh, this pink uh, shiny skull here and the smurf and the phases <laughs> of the moon we Got do it. very serious work but we also like to have fun <laughs> <laughs> juliet thanks for showing me your office thank you char let's go around the corner to the magical part of the radio station here we have the conference room which is where anyone who wants to can work if they're feeling stir crazy and need some time with other people it's also where we do our fun drives and of course this year uh, the fun drive was cheese themed. If you donated a certain amount of money, you could vote on what your favorite cheese was. Here is perhaps the heart of the entire operation, the air studio. We're gonna go right in. Welcome, Tom. Hello. Hi. This is Nikki. She is the music director and also the afternoon music host. I'm gonna have to talk here in All right. 14 seconds, stand by. <laughs> You can find that on the new Yola Tango or on excursions here on 91.3 WYSO. Fabulous music uh, for the remainder of this hour. Stay close. Fresh air come out this afternoon at 3. Wanted to get to some Ockerville River and we will first. This is brand new from Parking Courts. On 91.3 WYSO giving voice to our community, our nation, and our world since 1958. Oh, awesome. Is that just completely off the cuff? Completely off the cuff. Years ago, I used to worry and worry and worry and ponder and write things down and and fuss and punish my sense of what ifs. And now, uh, I fully understand that uh, worst case scenario, even if I bust out in a a cuss, which I'm not gonna, nobody dies. <laughs> no one even bleeds. Show us the how we operate here. This is one of the speaking of cusses. One of the most important pieces of equipment here, particularly for the music uh, music shows, is the. Uh, 10 second delay. We have eight and eight that uh, makes our analog signal match uh, the HD. So that's already there eight, but I get an additional 10. And if I'm in this room and there's a profanity and a song, I can hit this dump button, which to me is funny because that's another word for a profane word. Um, and it'll uh, take out two seconds at a time. I have up to five times to hit that. So if I hear a profanity, maybe I'm standing over there, I start counting, I come grab it and I uh, can save it. If I happen to have left the room and I hear the profanity, too late. And then this uh, on this side is where we do traffic and weather. These two screens are together. This bottom one happens to be a touch screen, so I can at any point do support for NPR or go to a. As I went down in the river to pray. So as you see, I have you know any number of. Uh, uh, options here in this day and age with a piece of equipment like this. If you have dead air, you might actually be dead. 
<laughs> and these sliders are for the the CDs. Yes. And an, an important point that I would uh, I'd add is you do play music off of CDs yes. instead of just off the computer. Yeah. Let me here turn around here. Um, this is sort of the, the the hot stuff that we can, can have at our fingertips at any given time. Uh, these are all instrumentals. This is a hodgepodge of stuff that's waiting to go back to the library. This is our currents, um, heavy, medium, and then recurrent. They'll stay in here all told for about a year. And there's one little hidden secret that I would like oh, to show you is yeah. uh, not only can we play CDs in here, yeah. we can also play. Let's see. Let's so get the stuff off top. Ooh, yeah. uh. <laughs> Well, thanks for showing Shana, me the air studio. <laughs> Down the hall from the air studio, we have the music room. This is a ginormous studio, which is beautifully soundproofed with these double glass windows with air in between. And there's all these microphones so that live bands and choirs and all sorts of performance groups can perform live on the air. And you can see there's the window into the air studio so that they can be interviewed if they want to. There's the windows. It is pouring down rain outside. And over here is what's called the production studio or the moon room, um, which Peter is in now, looking all serious. That's where um, uh, group recordings or, or uh, interviews can happen. And if this studio gets struck by lightning, this studio can also be used as a backup air studio. Now, across from the music room, we are gonna go into one of our recording and editing studios. This is Studio B in particular. And here hey, is Ty. Sheila. <laughs> she is an intern at YSO. And um, Sheila, talk about what uh, what your work is like in this in the production studio here. Yeah, so a lot of times what I do um, when I come in here is do phone calls. Um, so basically the way to do that is you make sure your mic is on, the phone mic is on, and then these monitors. Um, and then we have this handy little console over here, and you can, so this is... So we have these three different lines, so this is the third telephone line. You just press in the number, and then um, you can hear the person talking on your headphones, and then you just talk into the mic, and you can just record the interview through um, a software we use, which is Adobe Audition. Um, and it's really easy, and it's great, um, because it's so much easier than, like, putting your phone on speaker and, like, holding a microphone up to it, which, like, doesn't always get the best sound quality, as you probably know. So I'm about to talk to someone who works at Huffman Prairie about how Huffman Prairie was founded, why it's named Huffman Prairie. Lots of people write in with questions about why things are named, yeah. what they're named. Yeah. <laughs> and this story actually turned out to be super interesting, so I'm excited to work on it. Well, I'm excited to, to see how it goes. Yeah, thanks. Good luck with your call. Thank you. Down the hall, here we have the kitchen. And through here is one of my favorite rooms here at YSO. This is the archive. Here is a lot more CDs that Nikki plays on her music show. And over here we have the boss of YSO, <laughs> the general manager. This is Nina. Hi, Char. So, so yeah. what kind of things are in the archive? Well, the WYSO archive is a physical archive that includes uh, hundreds and hundreds of hours of analog tape and this is programming that was rec recorded here at WYSO between 1958 and um, the analog tape goes to about the late 70s or early 80s. This analog collection, this um, quarter inch tape collection is very valuable and has historic um, significance. Yeah, and I wanted to ask you especially about this reel-to-reel -reel tape machine, um, which is what you play all this analog tape on, but, um, you know, today we edit all our audio on computers, but right. when you were working at NPR, this is what you would have to use. Exactly. How, so how does it work? So, audio is recorded on this tape. It's called uh, magnetic tape, uh, quarter-inch tape and the signal is imprinted on this uh, emulsion that's on the tape and then that audio signal um, when you, you wind the tape across these what are called playback heads which are right down here playback heads so when the 
when the magnetic material moves across the top of the playback heads, it plays back the recorded audio signal. I want to tell you what scares me the most about this machine, um, which is the fact that if you wanted to make a cut in the tape, right. uh, you would have to physically cut it, right? See that groove right there? I would take literally uh, a razor blade and I would cut that tape. And then, let's say that the sentence was this long, then I would take this part, find the end of the tape by rocking it across the tape heads like that, mark it with my pencil, cut it there, then this part, this is the sentence, would drop out, fall onto the floor, and I would tape these two ends together. I worked for All Things Considered, so what would happen is a host would go into a studio and record an interview, typically 15 or 20 minutes, and I would take that tape and cut it down to four minutes. And I would do that several times a day. These are the program guides from 71 and 72. And you can see they're like little zines, right? Handmade by the students. And the program guide them itself will be somewhere in the center here. So this is uh, Monday through Sunday, 8 a.m. through 1 a.m. And they list here all the shows that were on the air. Uh, Gene Loman, Big Bob uh, Boogie. And if you look down here at, at 12 uh, midnight? <laughs> midnight, you have the Beavers. And that was my mom and her sister's show. Um, they let they just let a bunch of teenage girls into the station late at night and let there them play go. around. And I think they played all Beatles music. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So yeah, Wiseau was a pretty funky uh, community-based. A lot of students on the air. It's changed some over the years. Now we have um, we still have volunteers on the air, as you know. But now we have professional. Um, staff on the air as well. Awesome. Well, thanks for showing showing off the archive, Nina. I love the archive, so I'm happy that you wanted to know about it. Thank you, Char. Good luck. So, continuing on down this dark and dingy hallway here, this building, by the way, used to be a chemistry lab. We have the community room, and this is where the Community Voices students get trained. Community Voices is the six-month program where people from the community learn from Nina and Juliet and the other reporters here how to make radio. Um, and it's very similar to what I learned when I interned here. I think if you live around here and you are serious about learning how to make radio stories, this is probably the best way to do it. It's worth it's worth the cost, I can tell you. Well, that's why so, and I'm so excited that I got to show it to you because I have an announcement to make, actually. I'm going to be starting a new job next week uh, at another public radio station, WBEZ in Chicago, which is a bigger public radio station and obviously a bigger city. But this is where I learned to make radio. This is where I learned to find stories that are interesting and to mix and to edit and to write things that aren't papers <laughs> that are more interesting for people to listen to and I'm just so grateful that I can learn uh, in a community full of curious, nerdy people like me. <laughs>